Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be talking about auxiliary views. Now auxiliary views is, uh, it can be a simple uh, concept to grasp. Uh, it's not very long, it doesn't take a whole lot to explain. However, if you are still unfamiliar with orthographic views and isometric views, then you might want to go back to previous material, review that, make sure that you're good to go with those types of views before we talk about auxiliary views because we will be touching very briefly on orthographic and isometric views and how they differ or how they relate to auxiliary views. So again, if you're still not quite 100% with orthographic views and isometric views, go ahead, review previous material, and then come back to this video. So in order to talk about auxiliary views and explain what they are and how we get them, let's start with this object here. So this is some sort of mounting bracket. And all we can tell from this view is that there are five holes total, four on the base, and one on the uh, vertically e extruding uh, portion of the bracket uh, that has a little bit of a rounded top to it. So when we look at drawing this object in orthographic uh, views, that is having a top, a front, and one of the side views, this can be kind of hard to draw. Uh, we can get the overall shape uh, with orthographic views, but because that vertical part is a little cocked to where it's, it's not truly centered on that base, some detail can get left out. And so if we move on to a top view of what this object would be, the top view in this case gives us the most amount of information about this object that we're supposed to assemble. Here we can see that there are indeed five holes. So we can see those four that are on the base. And then by using the center lines and hidden lines, we can see that there is a fifth one uh, in that vertical uh, part that extrudes from the base. But it doesn't it doesn't give us a clear image on just exactly where this hole is located on that piece. Is it centered um, vertically as well as being centered horizontally? How big is the hole? Um, these, are sort, these are some of the questions that we need to ask uh, in order to have all the right information. And this is when we start having objects that are cocked, you know, diagonal, they have slanted surfaces. Um, these types of examples cannot be drawn accurately with orthographic views. Now, if we have an isometric view that is a three-dimensional uh, representation of the object, sure, it gives us a better idea, but those are more for giving us the, the general idea of what the final product is going to look like. Those really aren't used to give you uh, dimensions uh, and, and things like that. So when we're using orthographic views, how do we portray something that is slanted or cocked on, uh, you know, these sort of things. And so when you think of a top view, a front view, a side view, uh, back view, bottom view, you know, all those can be used to give you a better idea, but they're not going to give you a true representation of what you're actually looking at. And in order to give you a better representation, this is where we use auxiliary views. So an auxiliary view is just um, a diff it's a view from a different angle. So it's a different point of view at this object. So that way you can see information or you can see uh, characteristics of this object that normally could not be drawn using your standard top view, front view, right view, left view, whatever it is, we use the auxiliary view to display the information that cannot be drawn accurately or truly uh, by using orthographic views. So let's go ahead and start with this uh, new example. It's a pretty simple shape. It's just, um, you can think of it as a strip that has been bent at one point uh, one side has been rounded off and a hole has been cut or drilled into it. So here we have an orthographic view. Uh, we have our top view. 
we have our front view and we have our side view. Now from each of these different uh, points of view, we can tell that there is a hole in this uh, particular piece. But um, all three views don't give us uh, a point of view of that face that has the hole uh, head on. Uh, we, we just know that it's there by interpreting the lines that are used to draw it. The hidden lines, the center lines, and in that top view, we can see, um, you know, the obvious uh, boundary of that hole with the object line. But we don't know if this is uh, perfectly round because we're not looking at it head on. This is where we would use um, an auxiliary view to give us a better picture of what this face looks like. So again, this is a part with a slanted or an angled face that cannot be um, represented accurately using an orthographic view and um, an isometric view. So if we look at, a, at what an auxiliary view would look for this, it's gonna look something like this. And when I pasted this in here, it looked a little fuzzy, but don't worry. I actually made the part in the shop, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. So here we are in the shop. I've got that part made on the table, and I also have the same image here in front of us, and you can see there's the front, the top, and the side view. And looking at all three, we can tell that there is a hole in that part, but when it comes to dimensions and exact location, uh, this is where things can get tricky. We don't know exactly how wide this hole needs to be. We can see the center line uh, pointing out where, where the center is, uh, but you know, as far as how wide this piece is, uh, exactly where that hole is, uh, the diameter of the hole, we can't really get an accurate depiction of that using just the three different views. So this is where we would incorporate an auxiliary view. And so I've got the piece here and I'm showing you the front view um, as depicted on the sheet. I'm showing you the top view right here. And here is the side view. So with all three of those views, none of, uh, none of them are giving us quite uh, a perfect representation of that slanted face. So what we need to do is give uh, the reader, give uh, the welder fabricator an auxiliary view, which is gonna look something like this. It's a view uh, that gives you a representation of that slanted surface straight on. So that way you can accurately see where that hole is located uh, and any measurements that you might need. All right, so let's go ahead and move into our third and final example. So this is a variation of something that I've had to build in the past. Um, it's a bracket that is part of an up armor system for vehicles in Afghanistan. This isn't the exact um, design. I don't even know if I can actually share that actual design. So that's why I made this little offshoot. Uh, just to show you another example where an auxiliary view would be required. So, in this in this example, there is a slanted surface, or there is a part of the of the bracket that is at an angle, and this part happens to have four holes that need to be drilled or cut into it um, in order to you know bolt other things to it. But using a standard orthographic or isometric view. Uh, dimensions for these holes uh, cannot be accurately drawn. So I can't give you the distance from the edges. I can't give you any kind of distances from each other. I can't give you diameters of the holes uh, without being able to give you a point of view from an angle that would allow you to look at this part or at this surface head on. 
So even if I were to give you, say, like a, a zoom in view on the front top and the left side, and then I were to give you an isometric view, you can see that the holes are there, but no matter how I draw dimensions for these holes, it's just not going to work out. And that's why I've not included them here. But what we can do is create an auxiliary view, uh, which is just going to give you another point of view from a different angle. Uh, so that way you can look at that surface or you can look at that side that's at an angle head on. And then here I can give you all the information that you need to know in order to cut or drill these four holes into the face of the bracket. So that's pretty much auxiliary views. It's just an additional view uh, from a different angle that will allow you to look at a surface or a part of something that you're building that happens to be angled or slanted or something like that to where it cannot be accurately drawn or accurately depicted using an orthographic view. And so here I've made um, a pretty close representation of the bracket that I was just showing you on the blueprint. So just to give you uh, a real world example of what it would look like and why you would need an auxiliary view. So here's just a quick side view. All right. So we see those four holes. We need to be able to be able to see this surface straight straight on. So that way we can get all the dimensions that are going to help us to uh, figure out the locations of these holes. So all the dimensions uh, and then the diameters. And so you, we can take a look at this from different views, like the front view, uh, the side view, even the back view, again, the other side view. And you, you can see that either way, no matter how we draw uh, this bracket using orthographic views, you you'll be able to tell that those holes are there, but I can't give you accurate information without a point of view that's going to allow you to look at that slanted surface head on. So this is, you know, essentially the purpose of the auxiliary view, just to give you another angle uh, to look at this slanted surface uh, more accurately. And that way you can get all the information you need in order to weld or fabricate the assembly.